Hello friends, once again welcome to Medical Malu. Today we are going to discuss some topics from pharmacology and the topic is cholinergic system, the cholinergic system drugs. So what is this cholinergic system? It is a parasympathetic system in our body. First of all, let us get some introduction to this. CNS can be divided into ANS as well as the somatic nervous system. ANS is autonomic nervous system which is again divided into parasympathetic as well as the sympathetic nervous system. This parasympathetic is this cholinergic system with the chief neurotransmitter is acetylcholine that is ACH whereas the sympathetic is this adrenergic system with its major neurotransmitter being noradrenaline NA. In somatic system it is concerned with the skeletal muscles and the chief the major neurotransmitter is again acetylcholine. So regarding this cholinergic system we have to see the, about the receptors of this cholinergic system. There are chiefly two types of receptors. The first one is the mucidinic receptors with its subtypes as M1 receptor, M2 receptors and M3 receptors as the major subtypes and there are two more other receptors but that we are not discussing here. The next set of receptors are nicotinic receptors with NM receptors and NN receptors with selective activation by nicotine. In general, regarding this cholinergic system, the agonist is acetylcholine and the antagonist is the atropine. Keep this in mind. About the metabolism, the acetylcholine is broken down by cholinesterase enzyme into choline and acetate. So let's go into the depth. What are the role of these receptors and what are they located? First of all, regarding the smooth receptors and there the M1 receptors, they are located at the brain that is the CNS and also at GIT. In the brain, it is concerned about learning, memory and motor functions. In the GIT, by stimulating this M1 receptors, there is histamine release and there is acid secretion that is the gastric acid is secreted and during its stimulation there is lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. Next is about the M2 receptors. M2 receptors are located chiefly at the heart and also some receptors are seen at the brain that is the CNS. In the heart by stimulating this SA node there is decreased rate of impulse generation. Its action at AV node causes reduced velocity of conduction, that is the conduction is slowed. Its action at atrium causes reduced contractility of the heart. Same in the ventricle, that is the contractility is decreased, even though it is slightly. And the CNS again causes tremor and analgesia, and this is about the M2 receptors. And M3 receptors are located at many sites, mainly first at the blood vessels, second at the smooth muscles which are again located at three other sites that is the GIT and the urinary bladder and at the lungs. Next is the third site is the glands that is exocrine glands like sweat glands, sebaceous glands, lacrimal glands etc. And finally it is located in the eyes. So M3 receptors, its location at the blood vessels has got many actions. By stimulating this M3 receptors of the blood vessels, it causes release of the nitric oxide, which causes vasodilatation. As a result of this vasodilatation, there is decreased blood pressure and flushing also. This nitric oxide, by stimulating this cholinergic nerves at the penis, causes the vasodilatation and the blood to pool in the penis tissues and causes the penis reduction. M3 receptors, by stimulating them in the smooth muscles which are located at the GIT, can cause visceral smooth muscle contractions, that is the viscera to get contracted and causes the tones and the peristalsis of the GIT to increase. As a result of this visceral muscle contraction, there can be abdominal cramps and bowel evacuation. The smooth muscles stimulated at this urinary bladder, that is the detrusor mainly, and this detrusor muscle contraction causes voiding of the urine. 
This M3 receptor is located at the lungs, that is, on the smooth muscles of the tracheobronchial tree, it causes bronchospasm and the dyspnea. This M3 receptor is located at the exocrine glands, causes higher production of this exocrine secretions. It causes sweating, increased salivation and increased lacrimation. It also causes the tracheobronchial and the gastric secretion to produce more of them. And the lastly, in the eye, it is located at two sites mainly, in the iris and in, and in the ciliary muscles. In the iris, by stimulating this M3 receptors, it causes the constriction of the pupil, which is called as meiosis. By stimulating the M3 receptors of the ciliary muscles, it causes the contraction. This causes increased outflow of the aqueous and thereby decreasing the intraocular tension. And these are about this M mucetonic receptors. Next is about this nicotinic receptors. The first one is this NM receptors, which are located at this neuromuscular junction and is concerned about the skeletal muscles. By stimulating this NM receptors by acetylcholine, it causes the skeletal muscles to contract. At last, it causes twitching and fasciculations if more amount of acetylcholine acts on this NM receptors. Regarding this NN receptors, which are chiefly located at autonomic ganglia and also at the adrenal medulla. By stimulating this NN receptors by acetylcholine in the autonomic ganglia, it stimulates the sympathetic ganglia and also activates the parasympathetic ganglia. Its action at adrenal medulla is by releasing the catecholamines. By releasing this NN receptors, as a result, there can be tachycardia that is increased heart rate and also increased blood pressure like symptoms. These are regarding the receptors of this cholinergic system. Next is some agonist and antagonist acting on these specific receptors. First of all, regarding this M1, the agonist is oxotremorin, and the antagonists are pyrancipine and telencipine. M2 receptors, the agonist example is methacholine, and the antagonist is methoptramine. In the M3 receptor, the agonist example is Bethanecol and the antagonist example is solifenacine and diriphenacine. And about the NM receptor, the example of agonist is PTMA, which is known as phenyltrimethylammonium and nicotine. The antagonist is tubocurarin and alpha bangodotoxin. That is, curare poisoning acts on this NM receptors and the blocks the action of acetylcholine here and causes the paralysis of skeletal muscles which are the chief concern of this NM receptors. Regarding the NN receptors, the agonist examples are DMPP, which is dimethylphenylpiperacinium, and nicotine. The antagonists are hexamethonium and trimethaphan. Next is about anticholinesterases. What are they? I have told you before that cholinesterases break down this acetylcholine into choline and acetate. So, anticholinesterase inhibits this cholinesterase enzyme and inhibits this breaking down process of this acetylcholine and hence increases the acetylcholine concentration. Here, anticholinesterase inhibits this cholinesterase enzyme and causes increased SEH concentration. So, what are those examples? There are two types of anticholinesterases. First one is the reversible, second ones are the irreversible type. Regarding this reversible, they reversibly inhibit this cholinesterase enzyme. So, the first group are its carbamates. The examples are physostigmine, neostigmine, pitidostigmine, and edrophonium. And the other group is acridine, with the tacrine being the example. Next is the irreversible one. Organophosphates with example of malathion, which is an insecticide, is an example of this irreversible anticholinesterase. So once this OP, this malathion, binds to this, this cholinesterase enzyme, it is irreversible and it is permanent. So there are high levels of ACH concentration which causes severe other issues. What are they? So their action at M2 due to high concentration of ACH due to this organophosphate poisoning, it causes the bradycardia, arrhythmia and hypotension. That is about the CVS. In the respiratory system, by its action at M3 receptors, it causes rhinorrhea and bronchospasm. So by this OP, 
inhibiting the scolinous traces causes causing increased ACH concentration and this increased ACH again acting on this M3 receptors at the GIT it causes abdominal cramps diarrhea and involuntary passage of stools and nausea and vomiting again it's is increased concentration of ACH acting on the M3 receptors causes the increased lacrimation and in the eye causes meiosis and also the blurring of vision its ACH action on the NM receptors causes fasciculations cramps paralysis and also respiratory pa paralysis usually the death is by the respiratory failure so what is the antagonist antagonist is atropine so the treatment is also with atropine similar examples are we have seen this reversible carbamates as physostigmine neostigmine pyridostigmine and hydrophonium so here this physostigmine and one more example the pilocarpine acts as the m3 receptors and causes the meiosis the disconstruction of people and as a result this physostigmine and pilocarpine are used as meiotic drugs regarding this neostigmine it is used for treatment of the myasthenia gravis what is myasthenia gravis it is an autoimmune condition with anti nr antibodies that is antibodies produced against this nicotinic receptors so there are blockade of nm receptors by this antibodies so that ach cannot act on this receptors so as a result what we are giving is that neostigmine acts on this acetylcholine esterases enzymes and increases the concentration of the ACH so that more amount of ACH can act on the remaining NM receptors so that it can compensate this myasthenia gravis symptoms. So what is the hydrophonium challenge test? Hydrophonium is used to confirm this myasthenia gravis by giving a low dose of hydrophonium. The symptoms and signs of the myasthenia gravis are reversed for some time. So this ACH and anticholinous traces can be used for treatment of cobra bite and belladonna poisoning also so what is happening is that cobra bite it is a neurotoxin and it inhibits the receptors of acetylcholine belladonna poisoning also inhibits this ACH actions so by giving ACH derivatives or anticholinous traces that we have seen before we can give treatment for these two conditions so regarding this post-operative paralytic ileus we have seen that this ACH action at M3 receptors, so ACH derivatives and anticholinous traces can be given as treatment for this paralytic ileus also. In the post-operative urinary retention also, by this action of the ACH at the detrusive muscles in the urinary bladder, we can give ACH derivatives or anticholinous traces so that increased concentration of the ACH can reverse this conditions. Next is about the anticholinergic drugs. So anticholinergic drugs are just opposite to the cholinergic drugs. The typical drug is the atropine. Regarding the classification, first of all, the natural alkaloids, which is atropine and hyacin. Second is semi-synthetic, that is homatropine, ipratropium, and tiatropium bromide. Regarding the synthetic one, the first class is the midriatics. Here we have seen that ACH, its derivatives and this anticholinous traces all these have caused meiosis so these drugs anticholinergic drugs acting just opposite to that causes midriasis so the midriactics being used are cyclopentolate and tropicamide which inhibits this action at m3 receptors next is anti-secretory and antispasmodic it's by inhibiting this m3 receptors so just opposite to this exocrine secretory activity and the excitatory smooth muscle activity just opposite to that it is inhibited by these drugs that is dicyclomine example cyclopalm tridinium and glycopyrrolate next group of drug is vesicoselective that is it is by inhibiting this m3 receptors at the urinary bladder causing just opposite action of the ach that is just opposite to the contraction of the detrusa it causes relaxation of that muscle causes retention of the urine example is oxybutanin and tolteroidin next is anti-parkinsonian drugs that is enm receptors have got some action to do with muscles in parkinsonism that is tremor and rigidity so by inhibiting this nm receptors we can cure this tremor and rigidity in parkinsonian patients so example is trihexyphenidyl and bipredin. It has got some M2 inhibitory action also. 
Next, regarding this atropin actions, first of all, it increases the body temperature. How it means? It is by decreasing the sweat, that is the exocrine inhibitory activity at the M3 receptors and also at hi hippocampus by some temperature regulation center alteration. And its CNS effects. Atropine is an overall CNS stimulant. It decreases the tremor and rigidity at Parkinsonism that we have seen before. Serious action. It causes tachycardia and increased contraction of atrioventricular node just opposite to what we have seen with ACH. Its action is inhibiting at this M2 receptors. By inhibiting this M3 receptors at the level of eyes, it causes mid-reactics and also cyclopedia just opposite to the action of the ACH. Inhibitory actions at the M3 level at the smooth muscles in GIT it causes constipation and in lungs it causes bronchodilatation and in urinary bladder it urine retention just opposite to the action of this ACH at these M3 receptors. Similarly in the M3 receptors again by inhibiting them in the glands it reduces its secretion so there is reduced sweat saliva tears and also reduced tracheobronchial secretions these are the actions of the atropine being just opposite to the action of this ACH acetylcholine on different receptors last about some drugs of anticholinergics by inhibitory action of the M3 this hyoscine butyl bromide can be given to treat GAT spasms by inhibitory actions at M3, ipratropium bromide and teratropium bromide, it can cause bronchodilation. These are the bronchodilators being used in bronchial asthma and COPD. By inhibitory actions at M3, this glycoperolate can be used as pre-anesthetic medications. By inhibitory action at M3, dicyclamine, it can be used for abdominal cramps and GA spasms, even as anti-emetic. These are drugs that acts just opposite to this acetylcholine as well as its derivatives. This is all about our cholinetic system. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe. And this is Medico Melu signing off.